Hello and welcome back to my channel and today we're taking a look at Red Dead Redemption 2. Now this game obviously is quite graphically demanding and honestly I think 47 TTI should have a pretty good workout with it. So what do we have? 4K native, no vertical sync, uh, Nvidia low, low reflex latency, Nvidia stuff is disabled. Honestly I don't even know why you need it in here, it just doesn't make sense. Triple buffering is uh, turned off because we're not using vertical sync. We're going with the highest possible quality level, which sets the preset everything on ultra, including anisotropic filtering, which we actually don't really need in 4K, but hey, here goes nothing. Uh, the only weird thing is the particle quality is actually still on medium, but I guess if that's the preset, which is going to roll with it. We're not using any DLSS or FSR upscaling methods. TAA is going to be on high and advanced graphics are being locked for the Vulcan. So as you can see, even for this preset, it sets certain things on ultra and some of them are medium. So I do not know. Let's see how it all goes. But everything else seems to be maxed out like long shadows and full resolution screen space ambient occlusion, which means the light is hitting everything from every angle. So let's run the benchmark and see how we actually get on here. I do believe we're going to have a pretty interesting results. Considering that the Vulcan API is taking over DirectX uh, 12, which means a better instruction set being set to the, the sent to the GPU and processing all the frames, while DirectX 11 and 12 usually have some hiccups. So I'm kind of expecting it to be a bit smoother experience altogether. Now, granted, this game probably is going to be a little bit hard to run on 4K, but at the same time. We're not using any DLSS and that's the whole point. With the DLSS we can easily achieve 60 frames as you saw with the 37 TTI, but if you're about to drop down a grand, what can you expect? So, you know, this is literally just for us to see. So, here comes the benchmark, the first scene, the most uh, demanding one, the snow blizzard. So, that actually puts a rather big strain on the GPU. All the particles, ambient occlusion, uh, physics and everything else that needs to be rendered so it's gonna be interesting and we are at uh, roughly 60 frames well a little bit above so maybe the GPU is just warming up let's see how it goes and as you can see this is almost cinematic experience on these settings so yeah so far so good now granted there will be two more segments of this benchmark which really stresses out the GPU one of them is being the trees and the basically the whole long Arthur's journey through the city so let's just see how it all works out for us so for these trees actually there is a separate setting you can adjust for the tree render resolution which basically takes every branch and apparently renders it more naturally for the visual effect but we're not really looking up the trees or maybe we are who knows it depends how you play the game but even this segment is above 60 frames which is good for us the GPU usage is about 7 gigs video memory and 12 gigs of RAM, which is not too much for 4K to be fair. I'm pretty sure 37 TTI was closer to 8 gigs of video memory, so this is a bit interesting. CPU is actually going to work, so yeah. I'm not saying we're gonna be seeing bottleneck here, but to be fair, constant 60-70% of CPU usage usually means there are some, some data points to be crunched. So far so good, so let's see how the actual city looks. And I'm expecting to see exactly the same money clipping through the cash register as it usually does when Arthur takes it, so let's have a look if this GPU is able to <laughs> circumvent this and money clips through the cash register. Okay, fair enough. Not a big thing. Anyway, 70-ish frames for this scene. Probably the chase will drop us down closer to 60. Hello? 
Uh, 69, okay. As you can see, this GPU is able to hold its own without any upscaling technology being used. Which, to be fair, is a big thing. So, not only we are well within VRAM, we're actually having above 60 frames gameplay experience while we're recording in full-blown 4K. Which, obviously, is again a thing a GPU needs to pick up on it. Pretty sure without the recording we might actually gain a little bit of frames, about two or three. But nevertheless, if you're thinking of streaming this game, this might be the performance you are gonna be getting. Depends on the encoder of the OBS or the Streamlabs you are using, or any other settings for that part. <laughs> The one surprising thing in this particular benchmark is it's not consistent. So the NPC interactions and the bullets where they hit are different every time. Sometimes Arthur actually misses the dynamic throw and it just lands somewhere weirdly not hitting the carrier. And it actually lands this time. Also the color of the horses changes. Uh, I've seen two blacks, uh, two whites, one green, one yellow. So this time it was apparently one brown and white. So yeah, consistency-wise, uh, the synthetic benchmark is not consistent at all. Um, which is exactly the same as for GTA 5. If you run the benchmark, the amount of traffic and the type of cars you see on the road and the NPCs are always a different number, so it's very hard to gouge what is the actual sweet spot here. On the same note, so far I have not seen us dropping below 60, which means very, very, very good results for this GPU. So the minimum frames at the very beginning of the benchmark is 30 frames, maximum is 147 and we're averaging at 68. So what we're gonna do obviously as you know we're gonna go into the actual story itself and see how it looks in real games because and probably gonna hate me for it because I'm repeating myself synthetic benchmarks are a very crude comparison of what you're gonna be expecting in real real games in comparison to actual live game because there's all the unscripted events or even more scripted events than in the benchmark run and you know everything else in between so I'm kind of curious I think we should be getting around 70 frames at all times but uh, that stands to be basically kind of <laughs> verified I would rather say so and also, in regards to uh, this loading screen, I must say, I like the loading screen in Red Dead. It's all these nice shots, these almost nearly photorealistic drawings. It's uh, pretty nice. And here we are. Arthur's looking sharp as always. Having a puff. Oh, I, c I can actually see him breathe air? What? Is this life on ultra settings? Okay, so what do we have? We have 80 frames for now. I honestly apologize for this. I was trying to mount my horse with F because the last game we played was using F for interaction. Anyway. Come on, Arthur. Get up. Right. Let's go for a stroll. So, 65 frames. 64. Let's go into the boonies with the trees and stuff. A lot of shadows, a lot of reflections, 63, 62, ah, we're got getting pretty close to sub 60 here, 61, come on, hang in there, 40, 70, hang in there, 60, come on, 59, yes, here we go, so, despite the fact that we are, s there was a dip below 60 for a second, fair enough, I have to say, playing this game absolutely cranked out is rather useless. To be fair, these settings are not that much graphically challenging in regards what you're going to be seeing if you go with all high. Now, granted, uh, we could just enable DLSS for um, ultra quality and that would give us a pretty substantial frame boost. At the same time, end of the day. For the size of this game and the graphics it offers, I think uh, occasional dip is absolutely fine. But hey, you 
know, we're, we're doing science here. As you know, I'm not uh, ever excusing any kind of lack of performance, unless it, unless it's a very, I would say, no, known company that makes the games. But yeah, so. I mean, this looks literally cinematic as hell. Crazy. And for 4K Ultra, I mean, come on, guys. I can live with occasional dip below 60 on this. Okay, out of curiosity, out of curiosity, just for comparison's sake, let's enable DLSS on the highest quality we can. And let's see how many frames we're gonna be getting now. And here we are. Instantly we are way above 60 80 frames and I wouldn't say the game actually looks any different at this point it's just it just works now granted obviously you can say hey but you said there will be no DLSS well there wasn't for a good chunk of it but uh, again end of the day why not use it if you can and I know that people usually don't look at MSI while they're playing the game, they kind of like the immersion. And honestly, you would not be able to say you're getting a little dip below 60 here and there if you don't have MSI running. At the same time, look at how all of this is now. Like, the, the water is actually perfect. All these little reflections, the light scattering, the, the shadow. How, how can you say this is not amazing? So yeah, unless you are a very big fan about running the games with no upscaling or downscale methods at all, not changing any settings below Ultra, I would say for overall performance and quality, we're not sacrificing anything at all. And end of the game, uh, end of the day, you probably will want some performance during huge firefights and explosions and stuff like this. So. I would say this is probably the way to go, so why not? Well, I guess that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Over and out.